CD Projekt Red fucked up. The guys behind Cyberpunk 2077 made a bit of an oopsie. And I'm not talking about the aesthetics of their video game. I've been listening to that argument for a fucking month now. Ever since E3, people have been very vocal about the look of the game. It's far too bright. That's not cyberpunk. It's not dystopian enough. It's not dark enough. It's not gritty or edgy enough to be cyberpunk. You can't have fucking sunlight in the future. Cyberpunk is a traditionally non-cyclical 12-hour period of darkness that never fucking ends. According to these people, this is the most cyberpunk game that's ever been created in the history of humanity. Shadow the Hedgehog fits the criteria for what they want in a cyberpunk adventure. I mean, look at the little guy. It's a sentient hedgehog riding a motorcycle with a machine gun through the heart of a city at midnight, fighting a robotic manta ray. One of the main villains in his universe is a mad scientist that kidnaps woodland animals and turns them into robots for no apparent reason. He takes chipmunks and makes them into death machines just because he fucking can. This game universe is dripping with so much edge it gives Ginsu a run for its money when it comes to chopping through tomato cans. But I'm not, I'm not talking about their game. I'm not talking about the aesthetics and people having this argument. They're going to have that argument until the game gets released and they play it and they see whether they like it or not. No, they made the cardinal sin. They apologized on the internet. Maybe they're just unaware of the fact that the internet is chock full of hypersensitive cunts these days that can't handle banter or interaction or jokes that need to be in a hug box and have their feelings protected from any bad negative thoughts that might exist out there in the ether. Hell, it's not just the internet anymore, it's society as a whole. Even the FBI can't stop their vaginas from bleeding. Will somebody, for the love of God, please send these poor agents some my doll? They can't stop crying. Look how upset he is. The recent trend of victimhood being the big new in thing is still continuing. But on top of that, there's the doubling down. It's not just that you get offended, but that you get offended at the apology for having been offended. And in the midst of this kind of mindset, of this online culture, CD Projekt Red decided to apologize. Sorry to all those offended by one of the responses sent out from our account earlier. Harming anyone was never our intention. They may as well have thrown their ass into an active minefield. That is the biggest bait they could have put out on social media. Sorry to have offended anybody is inviting people to tell you how offended and upset they are and how your apology just isn't enough. And what grave response did they send out there? What hurtful, bullying words of harassment did they let loose upon the populace? Well, it was in response to a user by the name of Ryan. Did you just assume their gender? A fucking attack helicopter joke. I sexually identify as an attack helicopter. That was the bridge that was just too far for this group of offended people on the internet. And to their credit, they held out for about 24 hours. The tweet stayed up, but it eventually was deleted and an apology was issued. And of course, anybody with any common sense knows the story doesn't end there. They're still offended. The apology, it's not good enough. It will never be good enough. When you appease these kinds of people, it will never, ever be good enough. But this story is old hat. It's a tale as old as time. We've seen it happen thousands of times on the internet in just the last few years. I'm more interested in the people that got upset. I think it would be educational for all of us to get a, just to get an idea, to get our hands dirty, to take a look under the hood and see who they are. Let's take a look at these hardcore gamers that got upset about this horrible joke. Because I'm sure they're just everyday people like you and me. From Feed Me Gamer Boys, this majorly reads as, sorry you were offended, and that is a major non-apology. Something like, you know, we sincerely apologize for the transphobic reply that was originally intended as humor, but now understand the implications of said ignorant joke and intend to do better in the future. We understand if this has harmed your trust in us, but we genuinely intend to do better in the future, and we appreciate the knowledge gained from fans explaining why our comment was harmful. Try harder. You've 100% handed off the blame to anyone offended. And if you look at any of these lovely replies, you see the beautiful gamer culture backing you up for the joke in the first place. Again, try harder. But the mystery remains, who is, who is Feed Me Gamer Boys? 
I <laughs> wonder what kind of profile Feed Me Gamer Boys would have. <laughs> oh, come on. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Avery, 22, he and him and they and them, pan-demisexual, polyam, non-binary, trans cat boy, and he's a system. How could, how, how could CD Projekt Red offend this typical, average, everyday, pan-demisexual, polyam, non-binary, trans cat boy who also has a head system within his mind? From Moz, any comment on the harm being done by the people defending your original tweet by dogpiling anyone you offended in the replies here? A boilerplate apology is one thing, but explaining why you were wrong to post it and that it shouldn't be defended is what's actually called for. Translation, you didn't do your apology good enough, do it again, and beg a little bit more. Get on your knees. Get on your knees, CD Projekt Red. Moz wants you on your fucking knees like a dog. Game dev in the making. Trans non-binary. She and they. Well, enjoy your future career, Moz, and hopefully you never make a joke that upsets somebody. Or you're going to be on your knees sucking dick begging for forgiveness. Oh, wait, can I say that? Can I say on your knees sucking dick? Is that assuming gender? Have I crossed a line here? I don't know. Should I write up a fucking essay about why what I said was wrong and uh, beg for your forgiveness for daring to say it? You hypersensitive idiot. Miss Fat Panda. According to Cyberpunk Game, the way to promote your new game Cyberpunk 2077 is to use derogatory transphobic memes that trivialize and mock transgender people. Strange because Cyberpunk involves the deconstruction of identity norms, which should naturally include gender expression. Well, that's a, that's a hot take, Miss Fat Panda. Do you think maybe that deconstruction of identity norms might have to do with the fact that people are, I don't know, cybernetic in nature? <laughs> Maybe the identity issues have to do with robots and shit, rather than the fact that you feel like you are a, a polyamorous ponykin. There might be a little bit of differentiation between the two. Super high-tech robotic future, and you in a stable dressed as a horse, trying to convince people that you eat hay and that's natural. From Lesbian Wolf Mom, a mealy-mouthed non-apology like this makes one thing very clear. The developers of Cyberpunk 2077 are entirely comfortable with the kind of joking transphobia and bigotry their social media team has displayed, and see no problem with the joke. They're sorry, we're offended. Well, let's find out who that we is. Do you want to place bets before I switch over to show you who lesbian wolf mom is? Hi, I'm Ruby, and I'm a furry juggalo. I'm dead. I'm a juggalo furry. Is that, is that fair? If this were Vegas, would I be stealing your money? Lesbian wolf mom. Disabled cyborg dyke, trans white, poly and plural, switchy siren, she, her, and all the cool polycules. Literally a wolf belongs to our Charlotte Smith. On all levels except physical, I am a wolf. I'm starting to notice a trend here, a bit of a common theme running throughout all these profiles. It almost seems like the more offended a person gets at a simple, straightforward joke, the more batshit insane their description of themselves happens to be on social media. When you read through the bulk of the replies, when you look through the most offended individuals, in relation to the tweet that CD Projekt Red had put out, you'll notice quite a few furries and non-binary individuals. And that's not even touching upon the user base at other websites that are talking about this same thing, like Reset Era. If you want a really good laugh, head over to their thread about this, their 40-page thread about this, the thread in which you are instantly banned if you even so much as question if you should be offended about it. Their moderation staff is basically about a hundred clones of Stanley Rue from the Bioware forums. The thread is a literal killing field of people accidentally not going along with the narrative that this is the worst, most transphobic shit that's ever been uttered on the internet. So I think if there's a, a takeaway lesson from all of this, it's if you piss people off on the internet and you're considering should you apologize or should you not apologize, pick a profile at random out of the group of people that seemingly are angry at you. And if that person is a furry, don't apologize. Just a little checklist. Are furries angry at me? Yes, no. Do they have pronouns listed on their profile? Yes, no. Do they consider themselves a living incarnation of a wolf? Yes, no. Just make a handy little list filled with all the crazy shit a normal person would never say. And if you see that on their Twitter profile or on their social media profile and they're demanding you do something, just fucking ignore them. Tragedy in Jacksonville. 
a spaghetti-armed little nerd shows up at a Madden competition with a laser sight on his fucking gun and unloads on the other players that are better than him at the video game because he can't handle the competition. What a sad fucking event to have happen. But hey, even the cloudiest day has a silver lining. At least now you have an excuse to whip out those old-fashioned Madden gift generators one more time. Too soon? Is it a little bit too soon? The bodies aren't cold yet? Maybe I'm jumping a little too quickly into it? Should give it a little bit of time? Because nothing would be more embarrassing when a fucking tragedy happens to just jump right into it. What kind of a scummy fuck would you have to be to be desperate to be the first to the story? Well, maybe you'd be a reporter. I don't know. They're known for sliding up in people's DMs. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being so desperate to get information out first that you'd do anything to accomplish that goal? Even possibly, potentially releasing the the wrong name in your exuberance to beat out the competition. Breaking. Jacksonville shooting suspect has been named as online streaming personality Paul Danino. This guy's kind of famous, so anybody who interacts with him gets more viewers. So we think she's doing this for attention. Laura the Dumb Boomer Loomer. Miss Wet Bread herself. That's a little bit of a fuck up, isn't it, Laura? But it's not her fault. She was out collecting fucking boulders with her friend and her her tires got slashed. So she wasn't in control of her Twitter account. That was somebody else. But you know, she deeply regrets this tragedy. She's so very fucking sorry. Our star reporter putting out the wrong fucking name. Have you ever wondered why it is Sam Hyde, as a meme, constantly gets brought up again and again every time there's a fucking kidnapping or a terrorist attack or a shooting? Something bad is going to happen tomorrow. Trust me, you guys. I got a feeling about this one. It's because of dumb fucking reporters like Laura Loomer who will take any piece of information waved in front of their fucking face like a hungry dog gnawing at a pork chop. Yes, there's nothing like a fucking tragedy to bring out the hottest of takes, isn't it? Don't we love watching news outlets and reporters just get right fucking in there and release their bullshit to the masses? Like this piece at Kotaku. It's time to talk about Jewish hatred of blacks. (laughs) Wait a minute. That's a fake article. But this one isn't. Jewish gamers suspected of shooting two at Jacksonville video tourney. Holy shit. What neo-Nazi fucking outlet is this? Since 1897, the Ford has been a leading source of news, opinions, and culture through a Jewish lens. Holy shit, they actually wrote an article with that headline. What the fuck? We're breaking the conditioning! Ah! Ah! We're coming for you, globalist! Ah! Coming for you! But it's not going to end there. There's going to be talk about all sorts of shit. I put a poll up because you can almost predict the ways this is going to go. There are going to be a few topics, and people really split on it because they're all so selectable. We know what reporters, we know what the talking heads really want to push as a message, even before the facts of the fucking case are out. So people are really divided. Which way is this going to go? Well, Tariq Nasheed, of course, weighs in immediately. The first person who was targeted and shot at the Jacksonville Madden Tournament Massacre just happened to be a black man. You don't say, Tariq. A black dude playing Madden. Wow, he must be like a unicorn, huh? The Jacksonville shooting suspect is a white identity extremist from Baltimore. He shot a black gamer first because the black gamer won a game over him. Then he shot several others. It looks premeditated. Why else would you bring a gun to a gaming convention? Authorities finally identified white identity extremist David Katz of Baltimore as the shooter in the Jacksonville Madden convention. This is not a gun control issue. This problem is the gaming community provides a platform for these types of extremists to fester anonymously. I don't think he was a white identity extremist. I think he was a Jewish dude, at least according to the Jewish outlet and that fake Kotaku article. But I think Tariq might be onto something. After all, the BBC is a WMD. Black people, we have the genetic capacity to annihilate the the entire planet sexually. Only Tariq Nasheed could tell the world that my dick is a fucking nuclear weapon. So we've got the reporters out there. We've got the talking heads already injecting race into it. And then, of course, you've got other people that are going to make it a gun control issue. Like Aaron Greenberg saying that he really hopes people will stand up and demand changes in our laws. A GM, a games marketer at Microsoft. Well, Mr. Greenberg, I think you're right. We need to change those laws. Let's 
ban violent video games. I'm glad Microsoft is behind that message. It's time to draw a line in the sand. You could go on to Twitter right now and enter Jacksonville and Gun, and you're going to see the names you would expect to see. People just popping up and injecting this shit. Of course, toxic masculinity, that's got to be a cause. It's the dude bro culture of gaming. Or violent video games are inherently violent and make you more violent is another hot take on it. So you got race, you got gun violence, you've got people chomping at the bit to assign whatever rationalization or justification for why this crazy little faggot went out and did what he did. But here's a crazy thought about David Mad Cats and maybe the motivation or the uh, thinking behind his actions. Maybe David is a little bitch. Maybe David is a kind of little bitch that can't handle losing in a video game. When you put it in a, any other context, it looks insane, doesn't it? Imagine you're playing a game of basketball and you hit a three-pointer and the asshole on the other team whips out an AK-47. Imagine playing a game of checkers and telling your opponent, king me, and he pulls out a fucking hand grenade. That's David. That's the insanity that David has fallen to. Because he couldn't take a little bit of shit talk. Because he couldn't handle a little bit of banter. Because somebody's better at a video game than he is. He's going to start shooting motherfuckers and then shoot himself. It would have been a little more respectable if David had just shot his own dumbass. But no, he's got to shoot other people. And of all the video games for it to happen to, it had to be Madden? Fucking Madden? A football game? How's that going to play out with the violent video games make you violent shit? This wasn't the fighting game community. They weren't playing Street Fighter. This wasn't a CSGO event. It wasn't fucking Call of Duty or Battlefield. It was football. It was fucking Madden football. We going to start having protests in the street because uh, sports make you go crazy? Was David driven to the edge because of pigskin paranoia? I swear to fuck, every one of these dumb little cunts is always the same. It's always the same kind of asshole. It's always some fucking sped that goes on a killing spree. It's always some tard having a fucking rage fit. Oh, my name is David and my feelings are hurt. I'm not good at video games. Maybe go play something more your fucking speed. Like Nintendo Labo. Why are you showing up at a video game competition if you can't fucking compete? And don't tell me people can't deal with shit talk. You can watch compilation a compilation on the internet of people being shit-talked directly to their face. There's going to come a point when you forget about what happened. And you're going to want to come back at me. And you're going to want to wash the taste of my dick out of your mouth. And now we got places like Evo talking about installing metal detectors and people talking about introducing new laws and talking about the effects of video games on the mind. How about instead of banning guns and banning video games, how about we just ban retards from competing in video games? How about we have like an autism test at the door? We put a little toy train, a little wooden toy train on a track at the entrance. And if anybody so much as stops and looks at it, they can't get in to play the fucking competition.